In 2010, when I was just four years old, my favourite game to play on the PlayStation 2 was SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. I played it every day when I came home from school until one day I beat the first level and the game just crashed. I tried to restart the game and load up level two, but the game crashed again. I tried again and again and again, but it just kept crashing. To most people, this wouldn't be so bad, but this game was literally the only thing I did outside of school since I had no friends. So I was devastated. Not only that, the original company that sold the DVDs for the game stopped selling them. So my dad couldn't just go out and buy a new one. You see, back in my day, video games weren't just downloaded online and played instantly. You had to actually go to a physical shop and buy a physical DVD to put into your games console. And your games console would have a DVD tray which reads the data on the disc by shining a laser onto it while it's spinning. The disc contains microscopic pits and lands which are detected by a photoelectric cell. Most people think that the pits represent zero and the lands represent one, but this is actually false. It's changing between the two that represents one and no change represents zero. The problem with this is if the DVD had just one tiny scratch on it, this could affect how the data is read from it and break the DVD, which is what happened with my favourite game. A standard DVD could hold up to 4.7 gigabytes of data, which in 2010 was more than enough to hold multiple games and a couple of films too. But today, scientists have developed prototypes of a 200 terabyte optical disc, which is almost enough to hold Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Almost. I eventually found a new game to play on the PS2 called Simpsons Hit and Run. I still miss that old Spongebob game, but over time I learned to love the Simpsons Hit and Run even more. I learned my lessons since last time, so I kept this new DVD in pristine condition and it still works to this day. Only I can't play it anymore because the PS2, which was about the same age as me, stopped working two years ago. The first CDs were released in 1982 and used a single layer of pits and lands to store up to 700 megabytes of data. Then in 1995, DVDs were released which could store 4.7 gigabytes in a single layer or 8.5 gigabytes in two layers. Then in 2006, Blu-rays were released which used blue lasers for higher precision and could store up to 100 gigabytes using three layers of pits and lands. And recently in 2024, the 200 terabyte discs use multi-wavelength lasers and can have hundreds of layers. Each wavelength of lasers can pass through some layers of the disc and reflect off others, allowing for multiple layers to be read in one disc. A standard optical disc is around 1.2 millimeters thick, and currently the thinnest layers are 0.001 millimeters thick. So if we allow 0.1 millimeters either side to protect the disc, then we could theoretically fit 1,000 layers inside of a single optical disc. Given that the absolute maximum possible storage space in one disc is around one terabyte, you could theoretically get one petabyte of data into a single optical disc. But these discs currently aren't available to the average consumer because most people would probably just fill it with memes. Thank you to our channel members for keeping a roof over my head. Look, ah, my fingers, ah. Ah! Click this video if you want to see more. And piss off. Ah!